Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Jake's RC stuff and the first video on us actually assembling the uh, budget digital HD FPV system. Now, in the previous video I showed you all of the um, parts that I'd received from Amazon. Um, all paid for my own money of course because it's Amazon and I'm not important enough to get anything for free from them. Or even decent customer service half the time, to be brutally honest. Um, but anyway, we're here on the actual front page of the OpenHD wiki. Um, and what we're actually going to be doing today is um, flashing our SD cards. Now, I've done one, just to make sure I know what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm going to do the second one now for you, just to show you how easy it is. I'm just going to take out the old SD card. Uh, now, turns out that I was reading information from Easy... Uh, Wi-Fi broadcasting that said you needed a, a, a two gig, like uh, it was only going to take like a two gig card at the mid, at the most. Open HD actually takes uh, just over four, so make sure you at least get an eight gig card. That's something that I learned. Minus sixteen, so it's, it's not a problem. Um, so if you go onto the front page of the Open HD um, website, I'm just making sure I'm not peeking or anything. Um, then uh, if you have a look on here, latest Open HD image. Open HD image download. You can see I have downloaded it in the bottom left. Uh, now, in order to actually, it's not as simple as just dragging and dropping a zip file onto an SD card. Um, so, you need something called Belina Etcher. Um, I imagine it's at Belina.io slash Etcher. Um, or if you go onto actual the Raspberry Pi forums or website or whatever this is, it gives you the options on how to do it. But it's very easy, I have Belina Etcher installed, this is the program in the screen here, so what we do is we select the image, we go into downloads, we choose the Open HD file, now because it's less than 4 gigs zipped, from my understanding, you don't have to unzip this, if this all doesn't work this will be the first thing that I, I try, so what I can do is, 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 is select Open HD, open, select a target, so what I need to do now is... Rip into our SD card. Now I'm using a USB card reader. Now my cards came with a big, like an adapter to make it into a normal SD card. Uh, but I don't need that because this adapter has like all of the card types on there. Micro, mini, regular and compact flash I believe. So I have that many of these um, adapters hanging around. It is ridiculous. <laughs> So we'll just plug it in, let it begin, he says. Uh, now I might need to click that box again. No, it's... F I'm going to click it again just to let it, that box refresh. So generic storage device, 16 gigs. It's the only 16 gig thing I've got plugged in at the minute. And flash. And it says, uh, use a control, blah, blah, blah. If you are actually seeing this screen that isn't my car, it's just a car that I like a lot. Um... And it's starting, and it's a 0% flashing, and it will go through, even though it's a 100 megabits per second card, um, it seems to only flash at this speed. I don't know why, but basically once it's flashed, that's all you need to do to get something working. Um, it should be a case of then just putting the cards in and connecting everything, so... Um, I'll let this flash. I will stick. Each card is the same. There's not like a special version for each. You know, it's not a, a ground station side and an air side. They're both just exactly the same. And if you do change any settings, you need to make sure the settings are the same on both cards. Basically, the easiest thing to do is just copy the text file from one to the other. What might be even better for people is to, if you have the ability to, say you already have an SD card in your laptop or whatever you do it with, uh, put them both at the same time and then you can remember to do both of them but um, anyway, so that's the sort of first step of this done, I will then go away once this is done build it and see if I just plug it in and it works we'll, we'll see what happens okay, so we should have everything set up, we have air pie on this side and ground pie on this side, so we have a TV here um, that is hooked up by HDMI to our Pi 3 with the SD card in and our um, Wi-Fi thing Bob plugged in. I know nothing's meant to be connected via USB, but this is just a quick test. So, and then on this side we have our Pi thing, our Pi Zero, 
is the adapter cable, which is a good job I actually got the starter kit, because otherwise I wouldn't have had this cable and would have been very annoyed. Um, got this adapter cable into, again, another one of the Wi-Fi adapters. Got the SD card into the board. We've got one of our adaption ribbon cables that goes between our camera and our Pi Zero. So I'm going to point that. I don't know which way up it will be. So we'll point it. It will point it straight down at the floor like that. Okay. So I have USB power here. So all that I should need to do is now. I did read somewhere that you're best having the TV switched on before you plug everything else in. I've plugged in Ground Pi. It's found it on the TV. <sighs> okay, we've got flashing light on the Wi-Fi thing. It's solid. Um, it's doing something that I have no idea about. Under voltage detected on the RX Pi. Your Pi is not supplied with stable 5 volts. Um, I don't know why we've got that much of an on-screen display. Um, I mean, it's a it's a anchor power supply, so it should be half decent. Um, well, let's carry on. Now, on the high mini, you actually have two USBs. You have one that's USB and one that's just power. So, I've got them the right way around. Let's just see four shits and gigales. It took, it did take a while to boot the last one. It just made a weird ticking noise. That is a little strange. Right. Okay, let's put it down again now that we've got that plugged in properly. This is why you don't have USB connections. Okay, so we're rebooting the Pi Zero. This was not plugged all the way in. It takes about 10 or 15 seconds to boot normally. I am concerned that something keeps clicking. It's not getting hot or anything. Ladies and gentle people, um, we have, you know what, like, I'm not sure how I can sort of show this, but if we focus on that red thing and then, yeah, like, there's some lag there, but it's by no means awful, um, so wow I think it may have literally been that easy under voltage on RX we can fix you need a decent 5 volt 3 amp back <laughs> I've got a load of cheap 3 and higher amp backs we could put on this but I've got to figure out some way of getting rid of this on-screen display or the on-screen display of plain stuff because that's not going to work but other than that that's actually really good uh, and it's it is you see my real question is does that look HD to you in all honesty because 
It looks about standard, to be brutally honest. I mean, the actual text itself, yes, massively crisp. Speaking of camera stuff, um, this camera is actually about to run out, but considering that that just worked, was amazing. Um, so, I'll now do a more permanent setup. And also, another thing, to be brutally honest, that looks okay. Face it like 50, I mean, move the camera around. Yeah, that seems fine. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But it's certainly a very good start. So, thank you all for watching. See you all in the next one. Bye-bye.